Good morning everyone and my DigiKey order finally arrived with surprise surprise a whole load of name brand Nishikan capacitors. Now that means that I can start to get looking getting to look at some of the electronics which I thought was too good to stick any of my junk uh, no-name Chinese ones in or at least I didn't want to do that. And that includes this Panasonic RF-015. So let's get right to looking at this today and see how far I get. So let me just show you what the, like, well, by the way, I fixed after a fashion the uh, case on that. I have a video on that, which I will link in the description. So let's have a look at the behavior of this. I was able to clean up the outside. It's you know, it's really pretty close to perfect on the outside. So I'll show you, you know, there's been some battery problems in the past here. Uh, not too bad, but should anticipate that that's potentially an issue. Okay, so we got power. Let's put on AM. So, AM works just fine. It's about as sensitive as these radios are, which is not super. The, uh, the later one is a little better. Okay, on the FM, however, well first, because it's a metal radio. So, on FM, it's live, but it's not tuning. Turning the tuning condenser is doing something, but not very much. So that's what the current behavior is of this radio. And I'm going to print out a schematic and have a look at that. I think, unlike, say, the concerto radio that I worked on before, this is we know that the amplifier stage in this radio is fine and we know that the AM stage in this radio is fine and this means that something has got to be wrong in the FM stage. Now as I said I do have a schematic for this and then we'll have a look. I'm going to guess its capacitors. It could be a transistor in which case it's starting to get beyond my pay grade. There are other things that could be bad in this. This has surface mount components on it. As you'll see it's a difficult board to work on. So let me print out the schematic and we'll have a look at that. I've done that and here is the schematic for the Panasonic and there are a couple of interesting things about this. We can see the transistors and we can see that in fact it's discrete transistors. They have some capacitors on here are marked as chip resistor and capacitor. You probably can't see that, that's so small. I, this I think means surface mount. Uh, we have current uh, requirements, no signal maximum output, 65 milliamps. We have voltage measurements on here. It's a full schematic. So let's look at what we've got. We've got the FMR and all the stages are marked on here very clearly. So we know so this is the FMRF amp. This is, as I explained in the um, in the video for the concerto radio, these the RF amps are just kind of magic to me. It just it looks like it's attached to the wrong part of the transistor. How does it work? <laughs> I just doesn't make sense to me. The rest of it makes reasonable sense. Um, so this little symbol here, this little symbol here, marks a, uh, a surface mount component, I believe. And what I think we're on the lookout for are uh, electrolytic capacitors in the FM signal path. 
Also So we have FM RF amp, FM converter, FM AGC, automatic gain control, um, FM IF amp. It seems like a likely possibility to me. Um, then the second stage, so it's telling you what each of the transistors do, right? So TR, right? So we've got what each of the transistors do, and that tells you what this what the stages do. We've also got the diodes marked on here. So it's picking up something, right? There's clearly a signal coming into it when you put up the antenna. Uh, that noise was the printer resetting in the background. Um, so I think this is good. So I don't think we need to worry about the RF amp because it's getting an FM signal. So if the RF amp was bad, we wouldn't have an FM signal. So I don't think we need to worry about that. So let's see where we can find some electrolytic capacitors. And we can tell them, well, first, they're probably not going to be surface mount in this era. So, and they're also going to have plus and minus on them. So. Here's one here, capacitor, does that say 28, I think? 16 volt, 0.22. I've ordered that, I've got that. Okay, so that's possible. There's another one here, although this looks like a filter of some sort. But this is, you know, this is in the detector, this is this, the Sorry, that's the AM detector in AGC. D. Well, I'm not even sure. This looks like the FM output to me. So there are your two diodes. D3, D4. Do we see those marked on here somewhere? D1. This be D3, D4, D3 and 4 FM detector. There they are. All right, so there's the FM detector. There's an electrolytic there. There's an electrolytic there on the signal coming out. So this is my first target. Because there really aren't any electrolytic capacitors in the signal path in here. So that's going to be my target. There. Again, I'm assuming it's a capacitor because some signal's getting through, but it's not tuning. But why would that be? If a signal's getting through, nah, if a signal's getting through and it's not tuning, hmm. I mean, it could be a broken tuning condenser. I suppose that's here. There's, that's the band switch and the tuning condenser, right? There's the FM AM. I'm not sure, but I, I still think that seems like a good target. This one across here, but if that's open, I don't think that would be a problem. But if that one's open, it would be. And then something in one of these stages here could be a possibility. But, you know, could something like this be a problem. This is TR5. TR5 is TR2, TR5 is FM and AM IF amp. But you see, that's working, right? Because AM is working. So I don't think this is the problem. We would need to get into you know, TR4 is FM, AM, IF amp. TR3 is FM, AM, IF amp. Um, if it's something around TR2 in the FM converter, that would seem to be a possibility. And I don't think the AGC is the problem because we're seeing something. 
so, you know, what is there around here? Not really much in the way of capacitors. So I think the only thing is going to be to open it up to try to see what we can see to maybe hold up some capacitors. I mean, I'm actually concerned that it's going to be one of these transformers. No, that's the problem. And that's not something that I can fix, although I could sacrifice a different radio, I suppose. Hmm. I have to think about that. Okay, well that's it for now. Um, I'm going to try to open it up, I think, and have a look. That I will do off camera because these are difficult to open. And I'll explain how I did it after. I have it open. And um, just a brief discussion here. There is some battery damage. I will zoom in here so you can see there is a little bit of corrosion on these. Uh, here I did beep out the traces and it doesn't appear that it's causing any problems. So I'm not going to touch that, I don't think. I may touch up the solder on these a little bit. But. So how do you get open, o open one of these things? You take out this screw, you remove the knobs by getting some sort of tool in there. I used my cheapy tweezers here, which are now covered in, um, in wax from getting at components. And then you use a thin pry bar to get in between the top of the case and the edge along here. And I did a little bit of damage, but not too much. It's important to remember to get both of these screws out so the one there's one in the, in the bottom of the battery box. You can see the end of it here, and then the other one is right there. If you get both of those screws out and you get the knobs off, it's fine. The, I don't know if I can pick this up here, slippery. You're, after it's open, you can take off the band selector switch. So there's not really too much to take it apart. Uh, inside, I, and I clipped off the antenna just so it wouldn't get damaged. Inside, it's a bit interesting. They've been using, I, I don't know what these are, tantalum capacitors maybe? Those look like them. Um, anyway, so those are, maybe those are the problem. The, this is the output stage, I believe, because these two capacitors are associated with their, this one and this one. And since we know we have output on AM, we can probably assume those are good. These two capacitors here, are these two. So this one, which I think is tantalum, is capacitor 28, and this one is capacitor 25. And what I'm wondering is if these blue tantalum capacitors have failed. Um, so this one is, and that explains the weird value, 0.22 micro. That's just a weird value. And I, what I ordered is I ordered uh, 0.47. I like to write on the packages afterward because the, when the printing here is very small, so if you write it in a different color, it's easier to see what they are. So I ordered 0.47. That would probably work there. But the other thing I could possibly replace it is, it's just two 104s, so 100 nano um, ceramics. That might work too, and that might fit better in the spot. So. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I think I've got the soldering iron warning up. I think I'm going to desolder one end of this and see, well, I might as well take it out if I'm going to, and see um, if that helps. I will say, along with the nice schematic, this board is brilliantly marked. Everything is marked with, here, let me zoom in again. Yeah, it's it's a. Can we? Let me get a little bit more light down on this for you. Maybe zoom out just a little bit, right? So you can see C28, and here we get C25, R25, and R22, which are surface mount components. Oh, I should show you the back of the board. The back of the board is surface mount components, and I was wondering where the transistors were until I realized each of these is a surface mount transistor. And they put a gob of that sticky wax, waxy glue that 
they used so much in the 70s. You can also see that they've got some RF shields over different parts. These are kind of neat because you can lift them up and have a look underneath. This one has had some of the battery electrolyte get in it there, but it doesn't appear to have gotten on anything else underneath here. So I'm going to leave it be. They're, uh, they're, cut, they're in little PVC covers with a plastic, with the, uh, with, with, you know, covering this little copper foil in plastic. It's really quite neat way of doing it. I don't see any obviously bad so solder joints on this side, um, but I will look a little bit more closely with a magnifier uh, before getting too far gone in this. This is actually not too bad as far as these little radios go. This is, um, it seems fairly easy to deal with. Anyway, so, you know, I've got wax all over us from taking out these components. So I think that's going to be my plan of attack. Uh, will be to start with this one, which is, again, getting the, which is this capacitor here. And then I'm going to, just like that one, which is that capacitor there. These capacitors are built into the transformer. That's got to be one of these. I'm, I mean, if a transformer is bad, that's going to be it, I think, as far as what I can do. Oh, a little bit. Um, so that would be one of these transformers. This capacitor here is capacitor 23. Is that that one, maybe? Um, I'm not sure. It's hard to read this on the, uh, I have to look at the at the monitor to see these. These are some of the capacitor numbers are a bit hard to read on here. Uh, that's capacitor 21. That looks like 22 to me. So where's 23? Anyway, so that's of course that could be 22 and there could be yeah. Yeah, so we'd have to get this up from here. Let's find a knife here and let's see if we can undo some of this smooth and we find that see this so they're marking under what's underneath right you can see the so this is capacitor I'm not sure So 21 is underneath, it looks like, yes. 21 is underneath. It's got to be underneath this capacitor here. Okay. So, 35. Looks like 35. All right, so you can see just some of the sort of difficulty. 25, is that possible? Anyway, so you can see what's needed to get at some of these. That's also capacitor 19, it looks like that. No, that's underneath the other side. So I don't know. Anyway, so you can see a little bit more excavation is going to need to be done to see what everything is. Of course, we could just read the value off this and then use that to figure it out. Uh, what's the value on that? 6.3 volts, 220. It's not that one. Anyway, I will find it and, uh, and see what's going on. So I have replaced the, what I think is a tantalum capacitor right there with those two ceramics. Didn't make any difference. I tested this guy in, you know, the little cheapy component tester. The capacitance was fine. The ESR was 13 ohms, which you wouldn't think would matter, but maybe I replaced it anyway. 
I pulled this one out because that's also one that's in the FM circuit. And that's really the only other electrolytic in the FM circuit, I think. Um, I replaced that. This tests fine, but, you know, it's now got a nice Nishikon cap in there. Then I looked at this one. That one is in the amplifier, so it's got to be fine. And even if the ESR is a bit high, I mean, it's not going to matter in the amplifier very much. Uh, not for the purposes of this. So, yeah. So I put aside my idea of changing more capacitors, and I went back to the schematic. Oh, this shield broke off. I did, I should say, I, the other thing I did was that I resoldered everything around here, and I checked and double-checked that. This was on here. It probably wasn't actually attached electrically. I think I'll shove a wire in it or something. I don't know. I'll figure something out before I put it together. But uh, it has a metal case, so I'm not thinking that it's going to matter very much for the strong F stations in Toronto. So I thought I went, so what I was saying is that I said, okay, well maybe it's not the capacitors, but let's go back to the schematic. So I did. Well, I'll just, there we go. Um, I went back to the schematic and I started looking at the band switch. So the band switch is FM and AM there, which switches, you know, so TR6, right? Uh, where is that? That's marked over here somewhere. Anyway, oh, here we go. TR6, that's AM conversion, right? It sw switches that out. And then it switches, you know, this in, right? And I started thinking to myself, well, the behavior kind of sounds like the FM circuit isn't being switched in. So what I did, I got some contact cleaner and I sprayed the band switch. Oops. Ah, have to be right back. I just broke the wire off the battery pack. The battery pack is connected again. That was, of course, a pain because everything has been corroded by the uh, leaking electrolyte from the previous batteries. But it's in place. It's soldered in. It's only sort of dry. Okay, so let me show you. We're now on FM. There's no antenna hooked up, which isn't necessarily an issue in downtown Toronto. I'll turn up the volume. Oops. What's going on here? There we go. All right. Now let's do some. So, I mean, there's no antenna on it, so you don't expect too much. So we're not getting much else without an antenna. Uh, I had a piece of wire here. Uh, we can hold this on. So that's so as you can see, it's turning, tuning. It's not doing as well as it was before. So I'm going to spray out the band switch once again. But I actually think that's what the problem with it is. 
Uh, I don't think any of this work that I've done over here was actually necessary. Oh, I'm not upset that I did it. And uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where we are with this. It's um, I think it's working. I'm going to put it back together, and I'm going to try to figure out. I think what I'll do is I'll stick a wire up in here if I can, and then solder that in. And that could represent, you know, I'm also, this being off might also be causing problems as well. So I'm going to do that. I'll put it back together and we'll see where that leaves us. So I was able to gob a uh, solder onto the back of this piece of aluminum and I didn't just, the plastic underneath it's fairly heat resistant so it seems to have done all right. That's probably because you had to be able to solder it on here. So I've soldered it on there and, uh, and then put it over here so the, the uh, RF shield is now in place. It's working fine. And I don't even have the antenna on it yet. So the next step is going to be to put all the screws in. Now that it's working okay, there's one of them right there. So there are two screws there. This is the board is in its little clip at the bottom. There are two screws onto these metal pieces that are part form part of the tuning control here. Those need to go in place. Um, you can see my little capacitors here had to spread out a little bit, but it fits just. And so really, yeah, so we'll just have to put that back together here, get the back on it, and, uh, and then it will be a completed project. Putting the back on this is fairly straightforward. And I thought since I didn't show everyone how I took it apart, maybe showing everyone how it goes back together might be helpful. So just one screw there. It's always actually worked better than a larger screwdriver when it doesn't always fit. Another one here. So all this stuff is essentially held in place by the metal bracket that holds the, the tuning mechanism. It's not bad. Okay, so now I have to fix this. So I'll have to find a little bit of uh, heat, sh heat shrink tubing and I will be right back. Small piece of yellow heat shrink tubing required. It might even be a bit too big. these together but really the goal here is just to get them to stay while I you know what let's do this the easy way Not pretty, but it'll do. I'll just rush this over here. And just get a thick hitch for this. I'll do it this way rather than hunt for another tool sometimes tool you got in front of you. 
Yeah, well, as long as it kind of stays in shape. It's the best tool for the job. There we go. That'll do. Okay, so now we have the antenna reinstalled. We've got the two screws in there. We'll probably take the batteries out. And so we just want to make sure that there aren't any wires caught, particularly the antenna wire in the clips when it goes together. And there we go, all clipped together. You can see I tore it up a little bit there, but not too bad. Okay, so now we have two screws to go in. One in there, and one here. And then the radio is complete. Okay, so let's check out. It would help if there were batteries in it. Let me put the battery cover back on. Okay. Put up the antenna. One of the things that's wonderful about these radios is that the antenna folds up like this. That's probably CBC Fancy news. So they might have been traveling by horseback. And so there we go. One repaired RF-015 in pretty nice shape. A little bit of damage from opening it up. Almost impossible to avoid given the old plastics in these things. But I'm very happy of the, with this radio. And this is one that I expect I'm going to use. So, maybe there will be wiggling around that switch a little bit on AM. No problem at all. So I've learned a lot from this little repair. First, I can now get into these much more easily than I could before. Um, and I've learned that it's quite possible to replace the capacitors on it, although it's really interesting how they're organized. And I've not really, when I did the, uh, the one with the clock, the RF-016, I didn't really look at the radio circuit very much, but I did on this one, and that's quite interesting. It's nice to have done that. And what I learned that's most important is start with the stupidest thing first. The only thing wrong with this was corrosion in the band switch. That was it. These didn't need to be replaced. I mean, I did them, but they didn't need to be replaced. The only thing that needed to be done was I got some of the I have to get that off. That's some of the yucky wax stuff that they used on this. It's kind of all over my bent, my desk here. But the only thing that needed, to be that needed to be fixed on this was the band switch. That was it. And a few sprays of this. This is the uh, no residue kind. I actually, I like this better for a lot of things, but I really should get some of the lubricating stuff because I think for these kinds of little switches, I think the lubricating stuff is better. I just like that because it, you know, doesn't make a mess of, the, of anything that you sprayed on. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little repair of the RF-015. This has been a model I've wanted for a while. I'm really happy that this one's working. The only thing I have left to do is tighten up those little screws a little bit more, and then this will be fully repaired. 
Again, thanks for watching my amateurish repair of these kinds of pocket radios, but I'm, I'm really quite pleased with this one. And uh, yeah, even though I got off to the wrong start in my first attempt to repair. Thanks for watching.